Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Jan Madhya Syayatu Niviyad Itaradas Charte Suavigya Swarat Tene Brahma Hidaya Adikavaye Muyantiyat Surayaha Tejo Vari Medam Yata Vini Mayoya Tratri Sargo Mesha Kam Nasrena Sada Nirastakuha Kam Satyam Param Dimahi O my Lord Sri Krishna, Son of Vasudeva, O all pervading personality Godhead, I offer my respectful basis unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes, of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen on fire or land seen on water, only because of him do the material universes, temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature, appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Projita Kaitravotra. Paramo Nirmatsaranam Satam. Vedyam Vastava Matra Vastu. Shivadam Tapa Trayon Munam. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite. Kimba Pure Ishwarha. Sadyohidi Avarudite Tra. Krite Bihi Susus Mistakshanat. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth, which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity is sufficient in itself for God-realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam, by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nikama kapaturur galitam fulam sukumakad amrita drabya samyutam pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam muhur ahoraska buvi bhavakaha O expert and thoughtful man, relish shimad bhagavatam the mature fruit of the desire to Vedic literatures it emanated from the lips of Sisugadev Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectar and juice is already relishable for all, including liberated souls. Shinvatam Svakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Hidyantakstohi Badani we do not eat 
to hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita is itself righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna is dwelling within everyone's heart and acts as a best wishing friend and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nasta presu bhadresu nityam bhagavata sevaya bhagavati uttama sloke bhaktir bhavati naistaki In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhavo bhava kamalo badayas chaye chete taranavidam sitvam satve prasiddhati. By development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus, material lusts and avarice are diminished. Evam prasana manaso Bhagavat, I'm um, sorry, wait a minute. Tadarajas what? Tadarajas tamo bhava. Oh, no, I did that, I'm sorry. Evam prasana manaso Bhagavat bhakti yogataha Bhagavat tattva vijyanam when these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness, becomes enlivened by devotional service, and understands the science of Krishna perfectly. Pidyate hridaya grantis sidyante sarvasam saya Siyante ta shikar krasya karmani Drista evat manishwade Thus bhakti yoga severs the hard knot of material affection and enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagran understanding of the supreme absolute truth personality of Godhead Srimad Bhagavatam Canto 1, chapter 16, verse number 2. Sa Uttarashitanayam Upayema Iravatim Janame Jai Adims Chaturas Tasyam Ut Padayat Sutam. Translation King Prikship married the daughter of King Uttara and begot four sons headed by Maharaj Janamanjaya. <clears throat> Purport by His Divine Grace, Isi Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Maharaj Uttara was the son of Virata and maternal uncle of Maharaj Parikshit. Irabati, being the daughter of Maharaj Uttara, was the cousin sister of Maharaj Parikshit. But cousin brothers and sisters were allowed to get married if they did not belong to the same gotra or family. In the Vedic system of marriage, the importance of the gotra, or family, was stressed. Arjuna also married Subhadra, although she was his maternal cousin's sister. <clears throat> Gentlemen Jaya, one of the Rajarsi kings and the famous son of Maharaj Parikshit. His mother's name was Iravati, or according to some, Madravati. Maharaj Janamanjaya begot two sons of the names Gyatanika and Sankukarna. 
He celebrated several sacrifices in the Kurukshetra pilgrimage site. And he had given three younger brothers named Sruta Sena, Ugra Sena, and Bhima Sena too. And he had three younger brothers named Sura, Sutra Sena, Ugra Sena, and Bhima Sena too. He invaded Takshala, Ajanta, and he decided to avenge the unlawful curse upon his great father. Maharaj Pariksit. He performed a great sacrifice called Sarpa Yagya to kill the race of serpents, including Takshaka, which had bitten his father to death. On request of many influential demigods and sages, he had to change his decision to kill the race of snakes. But despite stopping the sacrifice, he satisfied everyone concerned in the sacrifice by rewarding them properly. In the ceremony, Mahamuni Vyasadeva was also present, and he personally narrated the history of the Battle of Kurukshetra before the king. Later on, by the order of Vyasadeva, his disciple, Vaisampayana, narrated before the king the subject matter of Mahabharata. He was much affected by his great father's untimely death and was very anxious to see him again, and he expressed his desire before the great sage Vyasadeva. Vyasadeva also fulfilled his desire. His father was present before him, and he worshipped both his father and Vyasadeva with great respect and pomp. Being fully satisfied, he most Munificently gave charities to the Brahmanas present at the sacrifice. Sila Prabhupada Ki Jay. So we see here an, an example is called supernational, supernatural phenomenon. Yas Deva has the power to bring someone who's left their body back again and uh, be fully cognizant and fully present. So, therefore, when you're dealing with transcendental personalities, everything is possible because they are empowered by Krishna to represent him and to help other people become Krishna conscious. And when a, a pure person has some request that is not against the principles of Krishna consciousness, there's a very good possibility that it can be satisfied. But pure devotees don't really ask for anything. Uh, why? Because they're so satisfied by performing devotional service, they don't need anything else. It's the service itself which is the reward. Just like when Krishna was thanking the gopis for their superlative service, he said, I really can't repay you for what you've done. You'll have to be satisfied with the service itself. So that is the sign of a pure devotee. They're satisfied by the service itself. They don't need any other extraneous thing to have satisfaction in life. That's a symptom of a pure devotee. In the case of uh, Maharaj Jaman Jaya, it's not that he's not a pure devotee because he asked to see his father, but the uh, you know topmost devotees are not not willing to ask Krishna for any service or any favors. Uh, they're so enthralled by love for the Lord that they, they just want to serve him. So this is different than Christianity and the Abrahamic religions. In Christianity and the Abrahamic religions, like Judaism, Islam, people are asking all the time something from God. They treat God as the father and the order supplier. But Krishna consciousness is uniquely different. We don't ask Krishna for anything. We only want to serve Krishna. And because of uh, 
extreme love for the Lord, he puts himself often in a subordinate position to the devotee. So everything, the tables are turned, or everything is, is different in Krishna consciousness. This is why it's un, not understandable for most devotees, because they treat God as the order supplier. Dear Lord, give us this day our daily bread. But the devotee says, Dear Lord, protect me so I can continue serving you uninterruptedly. So that's not really asking the Lord for anything material. And this is uh, something that we should meditate on because uh, it's the difference between Krishna consciousness and other religions. <clears throat> so Janman Jaya was so upset that his father was killed by Takshaka, the flying snake, that he wanted to kill all the snakes. So he went to uh, the, the, the uh, realm of the snakes called Takshala, or Ajanta. And he wanted to avenge the unlawful curse upon his father, Maharaj Pariksit. So he organized a great Sarpa Yagya, Sarpa means snake, to kill all the race of snakes. And then all the snakes started flying through the air into the fire. And there are a lot of snakes in the world, all different sizes, all different colors. And the demigods uh, then implored him to stop this. They said, you know, you can't, you can't kill every snake in the world. You know, snakes have their purpose also in the creation. And uh, so here's an example of a great devotee who becomes uh, angry and does something amazing by organizing a sacrifice like this for, with qualified brahmanas, but then is convinced to stop it. So we see that the symptom of a devotee is when they do something that's not exactly right, they follow advice to correct themselves. And a symptom of a demon is they do something that is not right, but they refuse good advice. So the demons like Ravana, Sisupala, Kamsa, and so forth are often killed because they refuse to take good advice. And it's but the devotees, no matter how bad they, there's, they perform sinful activities, in the final, let's say, uh, analysis, they're willing to take good advice and correct themselves. So that's another quality of a devotee. They're willing to take good advice and correct themselves. <clears throat> so, therefore, uh, Wonderful things can happen to devotees, such as <laughs> Maharaj uh, Janmanjaya wants to see his father who's, who died, and Vyasadeva brings back his father, and he's able to see him and witness. Uh, and then he worships both his father and Vyasadeva with great respect and pomp. And being fully satisfied, he most munificently gave charities to the brahmanas present at the sacrifice. So that's another thing, just like if you, if you get initiated, it's uh, very, very, uh, let's say, necessary to give dakshina to the guru and also to spread uh, dakshina to bona fide brahmanas. So we see that uh, the system inherent in the Vedic tradition was for always distributing wealth and sharing it with others so that no one is destitute, no one is hungry, no one is devastated by uh, severe uh, conditions. So that is Vedic culture. It's, there's always uh, distribution of prasadam, di distribution of wealth, distribution of knowledge for everyone, even the lowest classes of people. and and also enough uh, charity that everyone is not 
disturbed in society. So, are there any questions? Okay, all glories to Srila Prabhupada Kijay. Adibo, Adibo, Adibo.